G'day trendsetters, today I'm coming to you from Hayhira, Georgia, which is in southern Georgia and is also home to the Honey Bee Festival. Unfortunately the latest instalment I believe was canned because of the coronavirus, but that point aside, this is also the Hayhira Square. Over there is the railway station, so we'll poke around there and kick off our tour of this lovely little town. On the right here is the Citizens Community Bank, which appears to be modelled after the old railway station, which is directly over there. Interesting style of building. This is pretty new or has been renovated recently. Norfolk Southern is the railway company in this neck of the woods who operates here. And here is the railway station, no longer in service, and well, it's been beautifully restored. It looks like it's been completely rebuilt actually. I'll do a complete lap, we can check it out. It's likely serving another purpose nowadays. I don't really know what the old railway station is used for nowadays. There's no signs indicating what it's about, so I'll have to research and overlay a little bit of information. Let's at least put the camera through the front window. Today is a public holiday by the way, so a lot of things are closed today. Looks like a meeting hall, maybe it's a conference centre nowadays or something like that. Oh here's a placard, there you go. No tour of a town involving railway paraphernalia is complete without me scoping out this caboose for example. That was from a time when the caboose ran to the back of the train. So nowadays the caboose has been replaced by pretty much a blinky light on the back of the train. Here is arguably the smallest courthouse I've ever seen. A Hydra courthouse established in 1927. You don't see this too often. A time capsule for the Honeybee Festival. December 19, 2006, when it was created to be open in December 2031. The City Barber Shop, next door to Five Ashes Food Store that sells local honey. Local Mexican restaurant is probably really good too. El Carasal Mexican restaurant. And next door is an old milkshake establishment. I have no idea the original purpose of this building. It's all boarded up and abandoned. Pretty solid structure. If I meet a local, I'll ask them what it's all about. In fact, I have a local friend. His name is Mike. He runs an event called the Honey Bee Stinger. I've ridden that quite a few times and I'll link that in the description below. It's a really fun ride. It's about 100 kilometers, 63-ish miles. And right around the corner, coming into camera shot, is the City Hall for Hay Hira. City Hall is closed today. It's a public holiday today, Martin Luther King Day, January 18, 2021. All right, we're gonna get cracking here in a couple of minutes. Uh, I've got about uh, 60 to 70 miles to ride today, depending on how I feel. I'm getting over a really tough, failed bikepacking ride from a couple of days ago. <laughs> I'm feeling my legs today a bit, so it's going to be a nice tempo pace. And none of my city tours are complete without a visit to the local post office. The United States Post Office for Hay Hira, Georgia, 31632. Crossing I-75, for those folks not in the United States, this is quite a major interstate system, highway, that heads pretty much due north, all the way to Detroit, Michigan. Alright trendsetters, we're on to the very first dirt and gravel road today, and it looks like I've got the company of some chooks just ahead of me, or as we say in other parts of the world, chickens. Hello girls, don't panic. Don't panic girls, I don't mean you no harm. It's okay ladies, it's okay ladies. So today I'm riding a variation 
of the Honey Bee Stinger course. I will link the Facebook event for that ride in the description below. But my differences are going to be there's a couple of towns I'm visiting along this route, which I have visited in the past. I don't think I've recorded any ride experience videos through those towns. So that's kind of cool to knock out. So enough claptrap. Let's crack on with the riding. There's quite a lot of farmland on this route, pine plantations and more. And this area is synonymous with not only honeybees, but cotton fields. Most of the cotton fields have been picked by the time this video was recorded. Usually that happens around uh, November, December each year. These roads are riding amazingly fast today. Bloody pissed rain about two nights ago. They are hard packed today. Any sandy spots, especially on the clay roads, I expect will be primo. Today is a superb day for burning, as this bloke on the left side of the road is demonstrating. He's got a kick ass fire gun behind those trees there. I wish I could film it. I'm quite a fan of the backyard uh, bonfire. I forgot how lovely this course is because I think the one or two times I've ridden it, it's always been part of the honeybee stinger. It's always been flat out bloody tempo. Chasing wheels and looking at cassettes. Some of you folks might be wondering what steed am I riding today? It's none other than the beautiful Ridley Canzo Fast kitted out with Camp Ignola's E-Car 1x13 mechanical hydraulic brake drivetrain. By the time this video appears, maybe, maybe not, I might have a review of the group set and possibly this beautiful frame and fork. If you like fast road bikes and fast gravel bikes, this machine is whew, next bloody level. Hello, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you naughty boys and girls. Go home. Those terrier breeds are the funniest. They have got absolutely no fear. <laughs> First abandoned house spotting of the day. The front door's open. Hello, anybody home? Okay, we're gonna split. Two days of the drying sun has this rose pretty tasty. But it's obvious it rained a lot, a lot of ruts, a lot of boggy action. riding due west and just like a couple of days ago with my extremely failed bike packing ride killer headwind I love me some tough headwinds To the left is a field with some future produce growing and you can see by the amount of water runoff how sludgy, particularly a couple of days ago, this road and likely much of the course was. Extra challenging, especially if you ride the day after. Think Velcro. Hello Poodle, are you going to chase me? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
I was almost brutalized then by a poodle wearing a jacket. Experiencing a beautifully solid training ride today. We're trying to ride steady tempo versus farting around tempo. The wind, as I mentioned before, is kicking up pretty good. There's nothing I'm really training for, so to speak, but it's nice to have a modicum of fitness. I ride a lot of miles and kilometers and so on, but my top end, so to speak, is completely shattered <laughs> ever since, well, pretty much since sometime in 2020, when I last did a group ride with some mates on road bikes, like a small rotating pace line, that kind of thing, with guys I know and trust. Hey, what are you doing? Settle down. They're being total jerks, those dogs. I'm absolutely booking it right now. This is always a tough little section of course. Old historic home and usually there's a block headwind, which there is right now along this section. Wide open farmland. This my friends is the definition of a pine plantation. See the road sign, caution, irrigation in use. Not today. If memory serves me correctly, I'm drawing close to the first town. I modified this route a little bit to include two towns that are very close to the original honeybee stinger route. Do you have anything to say for yourself today? Oh, here's your mate. Oh, don't chase him off, naughty. Welcome to Pavo, Pavo, incorporated in 1898. It's the Pavo Library. Not open today, obviously. Interesting building has been constituted, or reconstituted, I should say, as a church. There's the water tower for the city of Pavo out of business business there isn't much happening in Pavo it was pretty much status quo from my last visit in this town there be the city of Pavo municipal building and the police department and you often see this in country towns the old hardware feed and seed this building on the corner used to be Mill Brothers Grocer, Produce, Coal, something or other else. Now it's out of business. City Hall, the Municipal Court, Council Chambers. Yeah, right, mate, good on you. And on the right here, the post office for Pavo, Georgia. And I should now have a tailwind, thankfully. It's time to roll trendsetters. Got a few miles, kilometers still to cover. Irrigation system on the right by Zimmatic. Okay, right hand turn. Oh yes. These sorts of road services remind me of my Aussie home state. South Australia and also parts of, well, a lot of Oklahoma actually, the red clay soil. If you look carefully through the tree line, hopefully you can catch the windmill that is rotating furiously in the wind right now.
for those folks who are not aware, these are live oak trees with Spanish moss hanging below. Or I should say adorned in Spanish moss. Trendsetters, I'm on the outskirts of the town named Berlin. This is not as famous as the other Berlin in Germany, but this is Berlin, Georgia. Welcome to Berlin. I'll let you in on a little secret. This is not my first time to this town. Rot roll is an angry dog welcoming me to town. Oi! Yes, hello. There we are folks, the Berlin Water Tower. Berlin Police Department. On the right is the United States Post Office. You don't see that sort of structure too often. It's almost like a mobile home type post office. But for those who want to know, the postcode for Berlin Georgia is 31722 and right next door is City Hall I believe. Yes, there we are, City Hall. And there's the logo, City of Berlin, established 1910. Some interesting cacti right here on the edge of Berlin. And a grumpy old dog. How's it going, you old bugger? Time to leave Berlin, I'm afraid. Not a whole lot here to see. It's a nice little town. I've got about 25-ish oh, miles to ride now. Should be back well before the sun sets. You should go home. <laughs> Welcome to the South Berlin Mud Ranch. This big ass rig out the front is the welcome wagon. Some impressive looking greenhouses on the left. They're brand spanking new. I wonder what they're growing inside. Back onto the clay roads and a collection of fine farm equipment. This area is predominantly farmland growing cotton and, well, greenery of some kind, I don't know exactly. On the left is a pecan grove and I'm drawing close to a, another town and also near the end of my route. I've completely forgotten the name of this town, I'll overlay it. This happens sometimes, you know. Hang on a minute, there's a clue on the left. That's the post office approaching fast. This is the post office for Barney, Georgia. B-A-R-N-E-Y, Georgia. Zip code 31625. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, it's late in the day. A rare sight in January 2021, an unpicked cotton field looking to me like it's going to be not picked and just left to rot away. Now this might be out of camera shot but there's a bloke over there doing tree maintenance on the pecan grove here. He's got a very fancy bit of gear making life way easy. Currently on the edge of Hahira, Georgia, crossing Interstate 75. There's another institution. You have the Huddle House and the Waffle House, and check out those flags. I've been thoroughly enjoying that tower window. Last, well, 20 miles or thereabouts. Back officially into Hahira, Georgia. Here is the official welcome. Welcome to Hahira, home of the honeybee. Well here we are folks, back into Hey Hira proper. Which means it's about time to close off the video. 
So thank you for tagging along. I hope you enjoyed this ramble through the Southern Georgia countryside. And it might also serve as a preview for some of those folks riding the Honeybee Stinger ride. Hosted by my good friend, Mr. Mike Mix. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos, such as ride experience videos like this one, product reviews, bike reviews, and other madness. I'll see you in the next video.